internal organization. And I believe as a businessman that first you have to set your house in order, you have to have a fast flow, it has to be well organized before you put it in the water. So we spent a lot of time reorganizing our internal efforts to US animals so that we can start looking over the bow and where we need to be going as an organization to help grow and support the sport, the leaders of the sport. So Jack Gearhart is going to join us as our uh, Chief Executive Officer and take us through all the things that we've been doing and as a result of the strategic planning efforts we've been uh, undertaking for the last nine months. So please welcome Jack Gearhart and his topic of his keynote is Winning Through Collaboration. Please welcome Jack.
treasurer, and then directors Dave Perry, Teresa Davis, Ron White, Rich Jepson, Claire Cooper, Russ Lucas, and Jim Walsh. Uh, Sally Barkow is uh, also on the board, and she's off playing on the Volvo boats. Um, we wish her luck there. And then another director, Gary Gilbert, couldn't make it, um, but they are here in thought. Um, so again, I encourage you to use the next three days to pick their brains and tell them how we can be doing a better job. Um, finally, uh, we have a great group of sponsors and exhibitors. I encourage you to spend time, get to know them, find out what they're doing for the sport. Particularly, we have our uh, platinum level sponsors, Gallery, which is a longtime partner of U.S. Sailing, Sun Sail and Moorings, and you heard they're going to be uh, doling out a great cruise on Saturday, so I encourage you to stay. And Sailor Bags, which donated and contributed the great backpacks that we have to put all our cool gear in. So, thank you to our sponsors. No paper in this one, Katie. These are new, and sometimes we fill them up, and they still have the uh, how-to label in there. Uh, this is part of our sustainability program. No single-use water bottles. Um, good thing. By the way, I heard that somebody was telling me last night. I think it was, was it Bob or somebody was telling me that the Trade Winds group here. Oh, it was Dan. Yeah. They have like one sustainability awards for how they're using water and uh, really appropriate place. And he asked me if we were actually looking for that when we selected this place, and I said absolutely. So <laughs> um, anyway, I usually use this in the past. Well, usually in the past, I've used this opportunity to give the uh, the group here a little overview of U.S. sailing, how we're doing, what we've been up to. This year, I'm going to talk a little bit differently, as Bruce said, this theme of how we're working together, connecting, collaborating. If you are interested in sort of what U.S. Sailing did yesteryear, our numbers and that kind of thing, there is a document in the app that is our year-end report, and I encourage you all to take a look at that. It has some great highlights and links to some of the things that we accomplished last year. So I'm not going to go into the sort of boring details. Uh, my goal, as I said, is to get everybody really excited about the sport. And also, I think you've noticed the, the, the theme this morning also sort of ingrained in here is this uh, idea of sort of looking at things differently. Uh, sailing has had a long story, traditional uh, history, very successful, but I think as we all recognize, there's some challenges ahead. Um, the future is somewhat unclear at times, um, but I think there's an incredible amount of opportunity for all of us. We're all here, we have our thoughts and our plans. As Bruce mentioned, I'm gonna share a little bit of what we're up to, um, sort of the results of our strategic planning project over the last nine months. And again, the goal here is to share ideas and learn from one another, to learn to collaborate so we can sort of really start to accelerate, I think, the advancement of the sport. So Jack Welch was a famous CEO of GE, I think everybody's heard of him. He had a, uh, a personal commandment, which was, don't kid yourself. And by that, don't kid yourself, I think it was about telling everybody that you need to be brutally aware of what you're involved with. Um, so around you, situational awareness, know what's going on. Um, I think the good news for sailors is we think like that. We're always thinking not just about the context that we're in now, but we're thinking about the tack ahead, the leg ahead. And I think that's really what we need to be doing in this forum as we go forward. What is in front of us? What do we need to be thinking about? Um, our good friend John Ruminier, who's the author of the Annapolis Book of Seamanship, talks about forehanded, and that's preparing for a voyage that you may have, not the one that you want to have. So it's really, what is, what's the context here? Um, I think we all know, all of us in this room, that we're going to encounter some headers and some foul currents, and we are. Um, Unfortunately, I think we also know that the sport has been flat, going sideways a little bit, but we're all here to make that change. And I think a lot of that is happening in your places where you are. We've noticed that Key West Race Week is no longer, unfortunately. Key rate, PHRF participation is down, and we all know the challenge of keeping kids in the sport. Um, but we're here to fix those issues, and I think we can do it together. We spent a lot of time, drunk a lot of rum, about talking about these problems. 
Um, and there's been a lot of great thought from, uh, from very experienced sailors. We read about the generational changes, the changes in family structure, youth organization specialization, I mean, this whole issue of safe sport, there's just an incredible amount of things coming at us that we have to deal with. Time starvation and this battle for attention in today's world. Um, and with a sport like sailing, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of attention, and it takes a lot of resources. So there's quite a bit of stuff that we have to work with. How are we going to turn this tide? Well, I think you all represent exactly how we're going to do that. It's going to take grit, it's going to take smarts, and it's going to take courage. When I talk about courage, it's sort of the courage to get your head out of the boat. It's the courage to do things differently. It's the courage to do things to get in a comfort, get out of your comfort zone, to be comfortable with the unknown. Because we all know we, we learn and advance and innovate through failing, and we can't be afraid to do that. We need to consider this anti-establishment that's out there and how we can learn from that, how we can learn from the disruptors. That's going to be a theme through some of our keynote speech, speeches. Um, I'm a Generation Xer. There's a lot of people in the sport that have been in it for a long time, the baby boomers that are supporting it. And we're constantly reminded of the aging demographics and the need to bring new people in. I think what's so exciting here is the cross-section of folks in this room right now is unbelievable. I mean, this is, if, if we could translate this across the sport, it would be fantastic, and that's what we need to do. Um, we need to do more of it. So no matter what our biological age, we need to encourage and embrace the mindset of these younger generations, the millennial mindset, and we'll hear a little bit about that later from Brian and Fanzo. Um, I think we, we all know that we don't have to be an expert in market research to, to realize that if we're gonna grow sailing, you know, we can't do it without the, the millennials and the Gen Zers. It's like going to be like beating into a gale. You know, you don't want to do it and you don't get anywhere. It's not a winning strategy. So we've got the old. We need to tackle the new. Um, but everybody here matters, right? We have to figure out how to translate sort of the DNA of sailing that is consistent throughout. Malcolm uh, Page earlier this morning asked uh, Malin Burnham, you know, what's the same and what's different about sport? The same is sort of the characteristic that springs out, the teamwork, the camaraderie, the self-confidence, the community. I think we need to continue, we need to figure out how to translate that into the 21st century. We need to figure out how to translate that into the new paradigm of these new generations. Um, we all learn the value of flexibility. We know that what worked 20, 30, and 40 years ago is not always plug and play today. Nostalgia can be positive, as we recall how we first fell in love with sailing and what we enjoyed about it. Uh, but it can also be limiting if it holds us back. Disruption is driving our world today, and we have to take advantage of that. So now I'm going to fit my first of four slides. So I saw this, I had a meeting uh, a couple of days ago with Guild, which is a big partner of ours, and they came and had their sales meeting, and this was in this presentation. Uh, the secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. And you, you hear that peppered in with what everybody's saying here. How many people went to the uh, uh, Yacht Club Summit in Chicago in 2012? Is there anybody here that went there? Okay. So Gary Jobson at that point coined this uh, sort of analogy of the five guys at the bar, right? This is the five guys at the bar. I will say, that I think there's only three of them there right now. We're making progress. And I'm not saying that they've died. I think they've come over, all right? They're starting to realize that change is necessary, and that's exciting. So, the future. We have to respect the past, but we also have to look at the future. We have to translate the DNA of sailing, what's incredible, and this legacy that we can all leave, right? About handing off a more inclusive, diverse, accessible, growing, and exciting sport for a new generation of lifelong sailors. So we haven't really figured out totally this millennial mindset. We've got a great staff, we've got a great group of volunteers, everybody is trying to figure it out. I think the thing that we know is we've got to do it. Um, and at U.S. Sailing, our big picture strategy is to embrace this change, be bold, learn from the successes of you that we can share across the country, 
in every corner of our sport as well as others. I mean, we brought USA Swimming here. I spend a good deal of my time working with my counterparts in the other sports, and there's a lot we can learn. John Pierce is going to be talking about what we're doing in youth sailing. We've got a lot of that from some of these other successful sports that are growing there. Um, so there are a lot of successes we're going to learn. We can learn from here. Um, we're going to learn about them today, um, and I've got a few examples just to sort of get everybody thinking. Okay. Last year, in 2017, over 224,000 kids participated in the REACH STEM program. I think probably many of you are familiar with that. Uh, across 400 programs across the country. I mean, this, this program is having a real impact of getting kids into the sport. 90% of these kids are first-time sailors. Okay? That's pretty amazing. Quarter, almost a quarter of a million people, kids, coming in. The thing that's even more fantastic about that is that in some of these programs, more than 50% come back the next year. That's a pretty good retention rate. And if we can keep that up, I think we can grow. Um, one of these exciting programs, Mission Bay Aquatic Center uh, in Southern California, they provided over 2,300 students a chance to discover science and technology through sailing last year. 2,300 students, that's pretty fantastic. And Jessica has been really um, phenomenal in driving that. This is a, a quote that came from a youth organization that works with another one of our partners, the uh, Downtown Sailing Center in Baltimore, Maryland. This is from a, a nonprofit youth organization that, that focuses on inner city and disadvantaged youth. After four years of sailing, our students of color and other minority students see themselves as stewards of the waterways. They understand the components of sailing, safety, speed, winds, collaboration, and much more. They value being on the water. That's pretty cool. That's, that's some of this DNA going into this next generation. And I tell you, this REACH program is going to have a huge impact on the sport. Another example, um, we've got some folks here from the GYA, and they'll know what I'm talking about. If, you, if you're not aware, the, the Gulf Yachting Association just adopted a new boat, the Viper 640. And this is a project that you go there and you talk with them, it took a lot of courage, it took a lot of discussion, it took a lot of folks with the determination to bring something new in. It was hard to let go of the flying Scott that they'd had for so long, I think 40 or 50 years maybe, a long time. Um, but now they're off to an exciting future and they've got a platform that's gonna be uh, representative and exciting to a broad range of generations and sailors. They got a lot of clubs collaborating and working together, which is what it's all about. That's what we're here today for. And they're moving in a bold direction. Another example um, is the New York Yacht Club. And, you know, they're, they're one part of our sport. I think everybody's heard about the New York Yacht Club 37 project that they uh, initiated uh, last year. What's really cool about this is it's addressing the needs of the sailors today. It's a full service program that's providing a boat taking all the hassles out of it. Basically, you walk on with your sailing bag and you go sailing. And you come back in and you, and you tie up the boat and go to your social event. Now, the New York Yacht Club 37 is, might not be at a level that everybody's gonna be able to, to, uh, to execute on, but just the concept, right, of access, reducing time requirements, and all the hassle, I mean, this is something we can all learn from. Um, and this can happen, I think, in any club, at any level, with some creative thinking. Finally, uh, the last example I have is something that happened in Chicago, and I think it's still in its um, building stages, but the five big yacht clubs in the Chicago area formed the Chicago Area Sail Racing Association. And they did it to serve as a forum to promote and grow and foster sailboat racing. The goal was to reduce the barriers to participation, improve access to racing events, and support beginning sailors to grow the sport in Chicago. They strongly believe that this increased collaboration will lead to better events and increased participation on the Chicago lakefront. Um, I think, Luce, is Luce Andoval here? He's supposed to be here. I think he's going to be talking. Talk to him about it. This is a group that sort of broke away a little bit from the traditional and said, you know what, we've got to take this into our own hands. And it's about, but again, it's that theme of collaboration and working together to find some, a solid platform and common ground to bring new people into the sport. 
You'll hear a lot about more examples today. So what are the lessons here? Save people's time, which is what they consider the most precious resource. Simplify access, focus on experience, and bring in a younger generation. We're in a new economy. We're in a thing called the membership economy. There's a great book out there that if you haven't read, you should pick it up. And it's about, life today is about access, about experience, and about community. A lot of things that we offer. Uh, it's not about ownership anymore. And a major strength of our community in sailing, community is the DNA that we really live by. And we need to translate this into the new generation. We need to translate our sport into this membership economy. So think about Uber, Airbnb, Spotify, Amazon, Alexa, and Tesla. They're changing our world, and we have to keep up with it. So what are we doing at U.S. Sailing? Bruce mentioned that we've been going through a lot of change, and we have. It's actually been pretty exhausting for, <laughs> for my team, I think, and the board. Um, at the beginning of last year, we looked at our, uh, well, actually at the beginning of 2016, we sort of looked at the structure of the staff at U.S. Sailing and said, are we set up to really serve you, right? Can we address the things that are concerning to you and are we doing a good job of that? And as we looked at it, it's like, you know, we were an organization structured to support U.S. Sailing to the, the volunteers, which are critical. I think one of the things we realized is we left out or hadn't fully developed view on the customer. So we took a look at our structure and we did a major reorganization that we implemented last year. And what we did is we formed three core departments within U.S. Sailing that are focused on what we felt were the key areas that you were all interested in and working on, which is on youth sailing, adult sailing, and then competition and racing. These are areas that we're involved with. Um, so we've got three new departments that are looking externally at you talking with the customers, trying to understand how we can help and bring solutions to what your challenges are. On the, at the same time, we took some of the other departments, our training department, and sort of consolidated all our product development in one group. So we're learning, we're taking best practices from the training department, what had traditionally been the training department, which was the on the water, our race administration, and safety at sea, and combine that into sort of our, that's our manufacturing facility, if you will. We did the same with customer service. We developed a, a department and, a, and some personnel that are focused specifically on supporting the organizations. Uh, Marcy Eichner is here, so if you want to talk about communications and things that we can be getting in touch with you more about, talk to Marcy. Um, and then we did the same with sort of our operations. And I think overall, we're doing pretty well. We've got a lot more cohesion. I think we're becoming a lot more responsive, and that's the goal. Do we have work to do? Absolutely, but I think we're uh, on a really good path for that. The second thing Bruce mentioned that we uh, started last year uh, and really sort of came to a, a, a good stopping point on or conclusion of was a strategic planning initiative. Um, this involved not only our board and the staff, but we broadened a sort of a working party to folks from outside the US sailing community and then we reached out to probably 150 or more sort of key stakeholders in the sailing community, our, our proponents and our critics. And we asked them for input on you know, what was going on in the sport and tried to, and worked to translate that back into what we should be doing. I can tell you it was, it was a really fun and it was a very illuminating process for us. Um, there was, uh, it, it was really helped us solidify, I think, of where we need to go and what we need to be working on. So after nine months of work on that, what we ended up doing was really crystallizing our, the values that we, that we work under, and sort of our core mission, and then developing a new vision of where we see U.S. sailing going and where the sport's going. So from a value perspective, I think maybe you all recognize this. We sort of operate under respect, integrity, intelligence, collective success, clarity, transparency, and sustainability. Um, our mission, U.S. Sailing is to increase participation and excellence in sailing through education, competition, and equal opportunity, while upholding the principles of fair play, sportsmanship, and safety. So those are cemented. That's how we operate. Where we're going, our new windward mark, 
this is what we've penned. It's pretty bold. Maybe makes you a little nervous, but I think we have to have something on the horizon to go towards. So sailing has transformed into a rapidly growing sport in the U.S., driven by innovations in access and education, and inspired by American success in international competition. The diverse sailing community, all of you, is aligned around common goals for the sport. The connection, cooperation, and synergies between all the stakeholders and U.S. Sailing is delivering experiences that excite and exceed the expectations of participants and are stimulating interest and involvement in the sport. Sailing has been embraced by the public as being inspiring, inclusive, and accessible. It's a pretty bold statement, and you're saying, well, are we going to get there? Well, we're, we're certainly going to work on it, that's where we're headed. How are we going to do that? This is where sort of I'm going to outline at a, at a real high level the five key strategies that we're, we've identified. Um, I just want to recognize one person that's been really helpful in this process, and that's Teresa Davis. Uh, she works at Accenture and has been really uh, valuable in helping us sort of put this process together. Uh, and also we had Brian Dorval working with us on this too. So we had a, a lot of really good thinkers uh, pulling this together. I think probably some of you in this audience also contributed to input, Alan. Um, all right, so this is a pretty complicated slide. And again, um, we're going to host a webinar over the next month or so where we're going to dive into the details of this more and actually what we're doing now and some of these strategies and what we're going to be doing in the future. So I'm not going to dig down into the weeds on this, but I just want to give everybody a little bit of context. So as you go through and talk to us here at USAL and you talk to our board, you'll sort of understand what we're thinking about. So the first strategy is establish a deliberate and clear pathway for lifelong sailing opportunities. This is about an, a, a sort of a pathway that people can jump on and jump off of throughout their life. Uh, it starts at youth. You'll be hearing more about what John Pierce is doing on the youth side to, to really, I think, revolutionize how the way we engage with kids and keep them involved in the sport. The second is about ensuring access to a full spectrum of organized sailing activities from all about fun to all about competition and from not only participation on the sailors part but also on the volunteers part. We sort of call it volunteering and support administration. Um, this is about, there's a lot of discussion in, in the blogs and in, the, in, in newsletters about making sailing more fun. We want to get behind that and make that happen. It's about relaunching and, and energizing the Portsmouth Yardstick so dinghies can get out and go sailing. It's about taking things like the Everglades uh, challenge that's out there and making that more localized. How can people take advantage of these fun events? It's about rallies. It's about bringing, again, that fun back into the sport. The third thing we're working on is regionalizing and localizing our presence. Um, that's one of the things that I think a lot of successful sports have done is they've taken their, their people and put them out in the field, the foot soldiers. Um, that's a big task for us. We started it. We have our regional symposiums. Our staff gets out a lot more to interface with you uh, out in the field. And our goal is to eventually have people out in all the major locations so we can interface with you, work with our volunteers. We think that'll be really powerful. Um, Reinvigorate and continue to evolve volunteerism. Volunteers, as we all know, has been recognized is sort of the key part of our DNA as well. And with the changing times and the changing time lifestyles and, and time availability that people have, sitting on committees for three years and attending meetings is just not what's in people's mind right now. So we have to reinvent how we embrace and leverage volunteers and how we give them a meaningful experience. And I think everybody should be thinking about that, and they are. Um, there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of passion out there, but it's, it's about I think, bringing people in for projects that they're interested in, where there's a beginning, a middle, and a deliverable. We found success in that, and that's what we need to try to replicate. Um, we're still gonna need sort of the volunteer governance structure, but we need to become more nimble, more inviting, and that's a big goal for us. That's gonna help us, I think, transition into this next phase. And finally, we need to establish and sustain a reputation for American success at the highest levels of sailing. This actually started out as a focus on our sort of elite athlete in Olympics. And as we went through the discussions, it's not just about that. 
but it's about every walk of sailing. We want people at the top levels at ISAF. We want people sailing around the world. We want leaders in education. And we need to recognize them because they're all going to provide inspiration for this new generation that needs to come in. Now, I'll talk for a second about the, our Olympic program. And you'll, we've got Bruce here and Malcolm here and, and a lot of our team from, from that group. Olympics has often been thought of as sort of the elite part of what we do. And I think it's actually the exact opposite. And as, um, as, as Susan mentioned earlier, you know, swimming grew when they were successful in Beijing. The uh, archery program grew when they were successful. Our Olympians are what provides inspiration to a lot of the kids out there in the new generation. It's about Team, team USA. And so I think it's part of our, our DNA as well. It's part of our programs, and I think we, we need to adopt that and think about it. It's not this separate thing, but everything we do at your level, across the board, whether it's community sailing, or the Yacht Club Junior program, or your fundraisers, that's building up our athletes and our, the people that are representing our country. So I think we can all buy into that at different levels, in different, in different functions, but it's really important. And that's, that's a, a mindset that we're working to change, because we need everybody's support to, to get there. So embedded in all these, again, we talk about diversity. That's sort of forefront. We, we have uh, diversity audits that we work through with the USOC. And I'll be blatantly honest, we don't do very well on that. Uh, and we've got to work on it. I think programs like the REACH program are going to help us do that. And there's a lot of other things that we're working on. So that is, is front, of, front of mind for us as well. And then communication. I think everything comes down to communication. We talk about it at our board meeting. We talk about it internally. It's, ingrained in sort of a lot of the things that we're talking about over the next three days. We've got to do a better job of that. Uh, so we're in the process of beginning to implement this, this, these, three, these five strategies. A lot of the things we're doing now support them very well. There's some gaps and there's some areas that we just realized headlights came on and say, hey, we've got to spend some attention doing this and that's what we're going to do. So we're looking for your input on this. Um, it's, this is a, a strategic plan and a strategic roadmap is ever evolving. And, but it, it, at least it gives us a direction to go in. I'm getting pretty close, I'm almost on time here. Um, so I'm coming to the end. All of us in this room have been really lucky. We discovered sailing has opened up moments of joy, camaraderie, and peace that might never have been. It has given us an entree into an incredible community of interesting people who've told great stories and who are happy to share their knowledge with us. It's given us a cool place to hang out. It has taken us to new and interesting and often beautiful places. It has taught us teamwork, leadership, empathy, and perseverance, some of these virtues that Malin shared with us this morning. So together, I think, we need to focus on offering an inviting on-ramp to the sport. It offers, I think, all the promises of connection, adventure, fun, enjoyment that sailing offers. We need to align our collaboration and goals. And this is going to be my last slide. So does anybody know where this is from, this picture? What's that? Yep. So what an incredible accomplishment, right? And to me, this represents alignment and teamwork getting there. And I know there was a lot of stuff that happened, but I think this sort of represents the coming together and, and a lot of hard work. And that's what we have in front of us. You are the leaders of the sport. You are the leadership that people are relying on. If we do our job right, we can get to the point where our sport is growing and we're lighting the path for the newcomers. So over the next three days, as, as our village people said, um, Let's soak up as much knowledge as we can, information and wisdom, so you can take it back to your clubs and communities. That's why we're here. And we at US Sailing are not going to be successful unless you do that. Unless you take back stuff, unless you fill up your Rolodex of new friends and a notebook of actionable takeaways. We have a great set of speakers coming up over the next few days, and I think you're going to soak a lot of stuff up. They're going to be talking about how to break through, about how to get into this millennial mindset, about embracing disruption, and also embracing the anti-establishment.
But I'm going to ask you to do one thing over the next couple of days as well, and I'm not the first one to do it. But I think you need to make a commitment. We all need to make a commitment to look outside our boat, get our heads out of the boat, look beyond ourselves. Um, I'm going to quote Malin again this morning. Community before self. We need to think beyond our gates, beyond our parking lots, beyond our docks. Think about how you can work together with your fellow leaders, organizations, and your neighbors to help grow the sport. Embrace the hallway and barroom networking. Think about who, who's here or in your community that you can partner with so that we can make two and two equal seven. This is a fertile ground for collective creativity. There's a lot of talent, so we need to take advantage of it. We spent a lot of time talking about the challenges and obstacles. Now we need to think about the opportunities, the upside, and what success looks like. I'm really psyched about today. I get nervous when I get up here to talk to all of you, but um, it also gets me really fired up, and I'm looking forward to the next three days. I learn a lot, get a lot of great ideas, and it's, it's just there's not a better group of people to be with. So thank you for your attention, and thank you for being here and bringing all your knowledge and passion and ideas to share with everybody here. So let's have a good time over the next three days. Thank you very much. I'm supposed to remind everybody that we're going to get up and stretch our legs. We've got about a half an hour break. Half an hour break. Please visit our friends around the periphery here. They want to tell you a lot of great things about their products and services. And I think there's some refreshments out uh, in the foyer out front. So thank you very much.